All right, welcome to episode zero of the Brought to Light podcast, brought to you by Not For Long Media, and I'm honored today to have an amazing person. Uh, most folks will attribute the accolades of him being an active NFL player for the Carolina Panthers and think that that's really cool, but what's really cool about him is who he is uh, when nobody's looking, and uh, I've been fortunate to, don't ask me how, uh, build a relationship, build a friendship, a brotherhood uh, with Colin, Colin Thompson, who is uh, my guest, who's actually going to be interviewing me today mm-hmm. on episode zero. And all we're looking to do really is introduce you to the broadcast, a little bit about uh, what we will be bringing to you, a little bit about me and who I am, and get you engaged in our future productions and get you interested in sharing uh, what you find of value in our broadcasts, in our podcasts. And uh, we look forward to just getting to know you better and engaging with you more and more. So with that, Colin, the floor is yours. I appreciate it, Mari. Yeah, so Mari is an absolute legend for those that are tuning in that don't know Mari. And we are just absolutely thrilled to have him here at our media company. Yes, I do play in the NFL. Uh, and we started this media company years ago, Not For Long Media. NFL stands for Not For Long. So I started a side business while you're playing in the league. So that's the background behind that. For those that are listening, wondering what is Not For Long Media? What does that have to do with Brought to Light? It doesn't have much to do with Brought to Light other than we're taking care of the back end stuff for Mari. This is Mari's show. And we're here to support him with whatever you need. So today is episode zero. We like to do this at the media company. I think it's always the top listen episode because people are trying to figure out what the podcast is about. This is what you're going to find out. The podcast is about Mari and his journey and his travel and his mindset. Some episodes will be five minutes. Some episodes will be whatever, hour and 30 minutes. We don't know. But we're going to go on this journey. We're going to have some fun with it. And we're going to get to know Mari and his mindset along the way. So First question for Mari here as I kind of host this show, why did you want a show and why did you want to start it? It's an excellent question. So, you know, there's a lot of um, things that consume our bandwidth daily, right? Especially in the social media realm and in the podcast realm. And what I wanted to do was specifically, and the name is born of this, this idea of having a show, a podcast, where we can take life lessons learned. And even though they may not be directly correlated to the end user, the person listening, they can map on the overcomer story, if you will, of this is what this person went through in life. And everyone is going through something. Everyone's going through a lot of things in life and being able to leverage that for themselves to navigate this life better. So that's the essence of the show brought to light, but right, being brought to the light, whatever that means for you, that can mean so many things to so many people. And hopefully you'll be uh, very excited about some of the guests we're going to have on here. Um, You know, I was kind of brought on as the military law enforcement uh, subject matter expert uh, within the not for long uh, team, media team. But the reality is we're going to have folks on here that are outside of that kind of niche pillar, uh, because so many folks have so much to contribute. And uh, that's what we're looking to do is to bless people by giving them a really good show with unique perspectives. I think we're going to do some things that are different, some things that are going to catch people's attention. Um, They're going to learn quickly that, um, you know, what I represent, my brand cannot be put in a box in any aspect or realm. And I think people are going to find that really intriguing that They're going to see someone in myself that's got very strong, respectful, yes, very strong, immovable positions and opinions, and yet is very flexible in this perpetual pursuit of growth and knowledge and looking to be a better version of myself. And in doing so consistently and people seeing that consistency, them then looking to pursue that next thing that blesses them in whatever realm that they're looking to be to grow in. Tremendous stuff, as always, from Mari. Okay. Who is most important to you in your life? Hands down, number one, no questions asked, no uh, second guessing or, or, or having to even think about it, is my wife. So the reason behind that is 
you know, I read a book once, it's a really big book, uh, and it says something in there about finding a good wife is more precious than rubies. She will give you confidence. She will be there for you when you need her most. And she will propel you to the level of which you were designed and purposed for to walk on this planet for however short amount of time we're on this spinning rock. And so um, I think for me, uh, it, as I prioritize relationships, um, I, I get into this when people ask me how I manage time because they see I share a lot of my life uh on social media and they, they they ask about that and what i really do is i don't manage time i manage relationships and i manage relationships by prioritizing them and so uh in order for me to run my business i need the support of my wife and our very large family we have a, a blended family of six children uh in order for me to be successful um uh, in my line of work professionally i my i need my wife to be able to hold things down while i'm deployed overseas uh conducting some mission uh on behalf of the government uh in order for me to have success in my marriage i need to have a partner that i'm married to like i'm, I'm not married to some fantasy thing right like there's an actual human being on the other side of that that's got their own story their own experience uh their own crap that they're dealing with because we're all dealing with our past and trying to um navigate that to be better here in the present right and so uh hands down my wife she's my she's my partner uh she has my back i have her back is it perfect there is no perfection there's no such thing as perfect that's an illusion um that's an illusion that masquerades as like the dream thing it, there is no dream there's work a marriage is work. My marriage is work. And it's absolutely, um, it's the best, it's the best blessing that I think a man could have is an amazing wife that can have your back when nobody's looking. So, um, yeah, that would be my answer, uh, as far as your question. Super strong. So you mentioned work, you mentioned your business. Can you talk about your business? Sure. Uh, I can speak at length about my business. So I own and protect, um, uh, I own and uh, run Omega Protective Concepts, which is a defense training company. And what we do is we train people to defend themselves and respond to every form of violence in whatever realm that may occur. So whether that's hand to hand combat, edge weapons, firearms, and kind of the niche stuff that most of the defense industry teaches, but also teaching things like, um, you know, defense for the spouse of the traveling business person. So that's great that you have all these skills. Now you've left, say you're the husband and it's your wife at home with your loved ones. And maybe you do, or maybe you don't own a firearm and that's in some box or safe. Is your house really protected and the people you love the most really protected? So we get into those niche things. We get into, um, how to fight out of a vehicle while you are being held at either knife point or gunpoint. And when I say teaching skills, I'm talking about when people come to our classes, we run them through very active, live, dynamic, rapidly evolving, high stress, real world scenarios. And what that means is we don't get into notions and ideas and talking through an event. We say, here's what we've taught you. Here's the skill sets. Here's the principles that cover that skill sets go. And then the person can confirm or dispel for themselves if what they're being taught is actually being caught and if it'll work for them. Um, because if it doesn't, you're just wasting people's time and you're just wasting their money. So we have a very niche approach and uh, kind of how we teach. I've been influenced by some really amazing people in this industry that have been doing it for a very long time. Uh, so I'm a product of the product. And, um, the other thing that we do that's unique is we have a travel to train platform where I go out with my team and I'll go, uh, we've been, I'm in New Jersey, but we were in New York earlier this year. We were in Florida a few uh, weeks ago. We're going to the West coast for, uh, one of our preferred clients, uh, and doing their asset protections of fortune 500 company. And we're doing an entire national uh, training platform for them, for their asset protection teams. 
So we have, it's very unique that we go to where our client is. We bring the equipment, we bring the team, we secure the training site. We do all of that. You just have to have the people show up when we come and, and coordinate and negotiate. So it's also an interesting spin on kind of how, how we do things. Um, I have designed countless tools. Uh, some people would call them knives. Uh, which are uh, have been featured internationally on Knives Illustrated magazine, for example, and things of this nature. Everything I design is born of my legitimate uh, training and operational journey from starting off in the Marine Corps when I was a 17-year-old child to now uh, being in my mid-40s. And um, our mission within Omega Protective Concepts actually has nothing to do really with our service or our products that we sell, but really our mission is to free children from sex trafficking and to combat human exploitation. We do that directly via our charity arm, which is Operation Lightshine. And what we do is we take some of the proceeds from every single item that we sell and every class that we teach. We just made a, a $1,600 donation to Operation Lightshine, I wanna say two weeks ago. When we do that, we post it up for the purpose of integrity and transparency so people could see the receipts that we're actually saying what we're saying we're going, we're actually doing what we're saying we're going to do. Uh, so we do that. And um, that's what I do for my business. And then for my work, uh, I'm not exactly at liberty to define with specificity what I do merely because I've signed a contract, a document with my agency. Uh, for which I have a top secret clearance that I would not use my professional title for personal, professional or financial gain, but essentially uh, conducting missions around the globe um, in the realm of counterterrorism. And the idea is to be there and not let folks ever know that we're there and do the things that we need to do and come home uh, and doing that armed uh, around planet Earth. So that's my J-O-B. There you go. That's the J-O-B. A, a common question and a common phrase in the sporting world and really everyone's world about drive and passion and what makes you tick. And it's really, what is your why, Mario Breu? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. A uh, very common question in the business realm. And for anyone that's an entrepreneur and has been to any business advancement type training course, for me, my why is my grandchildren's grandchildren. So my vision is obnoxious. It's maybe offensive to some. It's it's way over the top. It's hard to grasp. It's hard to touch. Um, but vision is not really. Um, I, I I say this respectfully. Real vision is visceral. You can't touch it, right? Because you see it. It's right there. So uh, my why is when I'm. I'm responsible for my actions and for my inactions, and they have a consequence. And the consequence is tied directly to the success and the life and the wherewithal and the mindset of my grandchildren's grandchildren. So, um, you know, I've invested a lot of time and I've invested, not spent, I haven't spent any money. I've invested a lot of money, not in the things that we're told to invest in traditionally, per se. I've invested in really business mastery and learning from folks that have done this on epic scales. And uh, I say this with no boasting, bragging, pride or ego. I have friends that are millionaires, some almost billionaires. And they don't look the way that I and you and the masses are told that they look. They don't behave the way that we're showed that these people that they put in a box for us behave. They don't they're not driven by the things that we're told they're driven by. Um, a lot of times, you know, being around some of these folks or meeting their friends, you wouldn't know just how much wealth they have because they don't behave in a way commensurate with what, you know, we've been told people like that behave. A lot of these people I got to get in these circles are just, they're really decent humans. They actually care about other people. They're nice, they're kind, they're polite. They give insane amount, 
Did I just say insanes? I don't think insanes is a word. They give insane amounts of money away to uh, the poor, the widow, the maligned, um, the orphan. And uh, they're actually looking to do things that change this world for better. And I didn't know those people existed. The way rich people were described to me coming from where I came from in New Jersey was very different than the folks that I got to, thank God, come across and meet mostly through business uh, in this entrepreneurial journey I've been on. So that's my why. My why is my grandchildren's grandchildren, and I'm responsible for my actions and my inactions, and I'm responsible for my mindset, and I'm responsible to be an autonomous thinker. I'm responsible to question in a, in a healthy way, question everything, and don't accept anything necessarily just as fact based on the title of the person who is spewing that information, actually confirming as best I can and then developing, you know, good decisions and taking good action based on that. So I would say, uh, I would say that's my why. It's always a huge question to tackle. And, you know, I had a coach at stays one time, someone said, well, my family, and then one of the coach said, well, why, why your family? Because before you had a family, you know, or excuse me, why your kids? Someone said your kids. Sorry, I have a massive horse fly in this bit room, and it's pissing me off. I'm trying to focus, but uh, this is real. It's gonna be a real podcast, folks. There's a freaking horse fly in here that I want to absolutely <laughs> take out. And you know what? I'm gonna get it out of here right now because it's freaking driving me crazy. We can edit this out. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm thinking of the movie with. Uh, I'm thinking of the movie with. Um... Oh, you know man, it was the massive carpenter bees, and it's looking to freaking get up in into my little shed out here, my little bar. But I like I like your setup, by the way. Thank it you. It reminds me. Oh man, this this line from this movie came to me. Uh, Adam Sandler, where he's in the bayou, and the lady's daughter, everything's the devil. She's like one of these like mega Christians. It's the devil. <laughs> the devil's trying to interrupt our flow here, Colin. Maybe we should just keep this in for entertainment purposes. I think we that. should absolutely keep this. Listen, perfection is a myth, man. Yeah, you're right. So we're going to keep it in. That's why I love shows. You can keep That's it in. That's right. Keep, we're, <laughs> we're organic. We're, we're <laughs> There's a carpenter bee in my in my ear. Uh, I'm trying to stay muted so it doesn't interrupt Mari. So uh, it's funny. The whole why thing, one of our coaches said, some one of the guys said, you're my kids. And my coach rebuttaled and said, listen, well, you you played before you had kids. So what's your why? I always struggled to tackle it because I don't know. It's just like, it's like the gravity to me. It's like, there's a gravity that keeps me moving. And of course, and of course, the, all the things I care about family and friends and special moments and memories and building an everlasting legacy that you can give to people. And that's what I love to do. And the show's not about me, but I always find it's a hard question to ask the answer. I always felt it hard because there's so much. <laughs> and I think that's a great, great one that you brought up with a lot of you know just hit the nail on the head this is what i firmly believe in and i think that it checks a lot of boxes too like legacy and family it's strong stuff you know colin um it helps anchor me so i had a uh and, and we'll get into this there's so much more that i want to share i haven't been um boy how do i how do i say this with without without uh dishonoring the 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 trust uh so so i am uh i experienced a lot of abuse as a child and for many 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 years actually up until just last few years i never shared that and i thought the reason i wasn't sharing that was because i didn't want to impose that on people or put that on people or that's what I thought. But the reality was uh, so many times, especially with men, um, is our pride and our ego interrupts our ability to actually impact other humans and affect them positively. So what really it was is I didn't want to come off as though I'm whining about the stuff that had to me when that happened to me when I was a kid. That's really what it was. I just didn't realize that that's what it was. Mm. And so back, you know, kind of going one level deeper on this, on the why is that trauma, which thank God I've been as healed as a person can be from it, of it. Um, I have nothing 
sour in my soul or my heart or my mind. I have no anger. I have, I've been truly redeemed. I mean, truly, truly, truly redeemed. And we're a product of our experiences, right? And the reality is, you know, being around toxic, dynamic, uh, I didn't say toxic masculinity. I said toxic life, right? Just a toxic, violent, negative, uh, all of that kind of that programming for for decades. You know, it's you may be healed from that broken knee, but it still acts up sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're fine and you can get on the field and you can produce at a top echelon professional athlete level. But sometimes the weather gets a little gloomy and uh, it's about to maybe rain and you feel it. Right. It shows up. So my why helps keep me. decent my why helps keep me behaved my why keeps me from capitulating to negative thought to actions that are not going to be fruitful to anyone in my life to uh the calling and the pull towards say violence or behavior that is not appropriate the why will anchor you to not do stupid things that you'll regret. So the why has to be massive. Really strong, strong stuff. More things to come on broad delay. That's for sure. With this stuff is awesome. There's so much to unpack there. Literally episode one, two, four, five, eight, ten should could be why, and we could sit here all day. A uh, few questions as we uh, wrap up ec episode zero, and they fly by. I know you're having fun. What is your favorite part of your work? You may have answered these questions already. So uh, on my on the government side, my favorite part, I really like the idea of protecting people that don't know they've been protected. I, I find that to be just uh, I've done overt things in uniform and I absolutely appreciate that. I love that. I, I I I if someone comes up to me and asks me for directions, I think it's it's awesome. And if I can do something to stop a suspected murderer that's transiting through one of our locations and we happen to get him that's all wonderful I, re I really do appreciate that there's something unique about blending in with a mass group of people going from point a to point b around the planet and no one ever knowing that you were there and then coming home quietly and getting no credit as defined you know normally uh there's something really cool about that um just kind of um this concept of being a silent professional or a quiet professional and just, you know, um, it's important to share your journey. It's important to, you know, one of the things I'm, I'm, I've become, I wasn't always this way. In fact, I never did it. Uh, pretty kind of cons not pretty, very consistent with is my workouts. I post my workouts every day, every day, every day. And usually there's more of one of them. I post them. And the reason I've done that is for consistency. And that consistency is important because it touches people. It motivates people. It reminds people. And all of a sudden, you'll get a message from someone that's never communicated with you, never contacted you in any way, shape, or fashion. And they'll see some picture of my four-year-old running around like a maniac or my boy at a baseball game or something. They say, hey, man, I really like what you're doing. Thank you for the consistency. It helps drive me. And you're like, wow, I, don't, I didn't even – outside of being friends which you're not friends that just means we press buttons on some on this device right uh you don't even know this person but you're touching them right so there's there it's important to share what you're doing it's important if you're running a business you better tell people what you're doing if i'm running when we make a donation to operation light shine i'm going to yell from the mountaintops that we've made that donation the person that sees as sees that as boastful I'm not looking to change their mindset and that's okay. I'm looking for accountability and I'm looking to bring attention to the operation, in this case, Operation Light Shine. And I'm looking to bring attention to freeing enslaved children. That's what I'm, that's what I'm looking to do. If someone misinterprets that, I can't invest uh, any energy into that whatsoever. Um, and so that's important. But as far as what I like, I like just, not getting credit for things sometimes and just coming home. Uh, and then on the self-defense oh. side is having someone, you know, I had a, I had a client that was, uh, had been stalked by an ex, uh, 
beaten to the point of hospitalization to the point of broken body parts like mm. a very serious level of abuse and her boyfriend uh scheduled a a number of training sessions with me and this person was so traumatized and i'm asking her to use in her mind not yet fully processed she didn't really understand it at this point yet i'm asking her to use the very thing that put her in, her, in the hospital that it was giving her nightmares and just had literally traumatized her to use that thing against an attacker like think about that that's a massive ask of someone right psychologically speaking and so to see someone like that navigate this journey and through the principles that we teach and the skills that we teach escalate in confidence in how she carries herself and how she walks and how she talks and uh, the ability to repel an attack for someone looking to do real permanent, real harm to an individual. I mean, I, you know, I almost want to pay the client. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? It's just there's no... Now, I don't know how many people walking the planet today can experience that level of uh, gratitude in their work. No, I, nobody, not like very few, you know, they have to probably do what you do or I don't know. It's yeah. such impact. Uh, and as we wrap on this awesome episode zero, and I think maybe the most important question when it comes to a podcast, what makes Maria Brayu and the Brought to Light podcast different? Um, I'll answer that primarily uh, focusing on the first pillar of your question is, is what makes me different. I'm all in. When I'm when I'm uh, when I latch on to something, I am all in. I'm hyper focused. Uh, I touched on this before. I have very strong opinions i have very strong standards and i'm very fair i'm a very fair person um i have people in my circle that i don't necessarily see eye to eye with on every single thing and that's okay i think that's called being an adult and a human we've lost we've lost touch with that in our society today uh, so I think that's definitely, I, I don't subscribe to groupthink, even if it's good groupthink. I'm still an independent thinker. I loathe passionately being put in a box. Now, people can attempt to do it, and their opinion may may be, he's this. He's this. He's uh, This is a type of, uh, you know, a person of just really, 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 really strong faith. And I cringe when people call me religious. And they don't understand that that's because i'm different <laughs> right uh, i don't i don't necessarily align one thing with the other uh so people sometimes are shocked when i share my opinions on different things faith being one of them where they're like wow i didn't think that you would see things that way i'm like well i read the book and it's kind of in there <laughs> right so um so i'm very much an independent thinker i'm very uh good at keeping an open mind so long as we're navigating things that are honorable. If it's anything to do with morality, indecency, something that I think is going to harm my children or anyone's children, I will not have a conversation. I'm not open to being transformed in my way of thinking and manipulated in my standards to facilitate something that I think is a pathway to destruction of a culture. And history points to that. So I think that's one of the things that definitely makes me different. Uh, my perspective on faith, my perspective on family, you know, how I manage time versus how I manage relationships. Um, uh, my perspectives on fitness and physical fitness. I do everything from a fighting fitness kind of platform and all these things we can unpack in obviously future podcasts. But I, I would say definitely is uh, my immovable position on being an autonomous thinker and thinking for myself based on engaging with people that I believe are knowledgeable in whatever that realm may be, right? Whatever that field may be. And what happens a lot of times is my journey in life has proven time and time and time again in the big 
topics of life, faith, we'll use the words religion there loosely, uh, politics, um, policy, like say government policy. You know, people think someone like me with a cross tattoo on my body that's served in the Marine Corps and now works in the capacity that I work in. They think I vote a certain way. They think I think a certain way. They put people put you in a box and it's like, hey, man, there's more to me than that box that you want to put me in. And I say some things that are very audacious and really make people think sometimes. I have opinions about law enforcement. I have opinions about military. Like I have to earn just because I'm a Marine does not mean I've earned your respect. Right. Just because I tell you what I believe may be in my faith does not mean that I am a saint, does not mean that I have it all figured out. Just because I share with you how I run, let's say, my marriage and my household and my finances. Right. Um, there's always more. There's there's always um, there's always evolution. I think whatever isn't growing is either dead or dying. And I apply that to every aspect of everything that I do and everything that I think. And as a result, uh, that makes me different. There it is, folks. Episode zero.